Good evening, grave robbers, and welcome to the television graveyard. We are your TV necromancers, Laura Prince and Noah Woolahan. We have come here tonight to examine the spirits of past television shows, to find out which ones could be resurrected, should be resurrected, and which ones should just stay doomed. This is a podcast in which we analyze the history, the hype, and the aftermath of shows that ran only one season, or only one episode, or never got their own run at all. With me, as always, is TV's Noah Houlihan. Do you want me to talk to him? I'm a psychiatrist. I think you got the line wrong. I'm almost positive I got the line wrong. So this is Arrow's... Uh, Backdoor Pilot, because this is Backdoor Pilot Month. Happy December. Happy December. And this is the Season 2 2014 Arrow episode, The Suicide Squad. Yes, it is meant to be a Backdoor Pilot for the spinoff Suicide Squad. What? Yeah. 2014, you said? Yes. So, this is before the movie. Predates the movie. Interesting. Yep. Okay. We're going to we're going to talk about that. That's soon. going to be good. This yeah, is going to be good. Yeah, that's actually a huge part of what we're going to be talking about. Today. Okay. So, uh, I hate to jump in and try to grab the steering wheel here, but for this one, can we just blow through the arrow stuff before we talk about the suicide squad stuff? Yeah, I do feel we need to add the disclaimer. Um, I'm familiar with Green Arrow and his surrounding characters in DC Comics. But I do not really watch the DC TV shows. I do not either. So I'm going to be going through some stuff, uh, but we don't really know much about the TV canon. Yes. So there may be some like timeline or facts things that we don't quite know. Yeah. So. So basically, just to start off, there there are two plots. There's the Arrow plot and there's the Suicide Squad uh, plots. Yeah, and we're going to blow through the Oliver Queen plot. Yeah, that's like, it's clearly not involved in the pilot and the launching of this spinoff. Yeah, they kind of try to tie it together in the end. Yeah, so we're just going to blow through the Arrow stuff. Uh, one, because it's unrelated, and two, because it's boring. Yeah, we start off, Arrow has a catapult nightmare that yes. looks like Stephen Amell was waiting for a cue. Yeah. Like, it doesn't look... Go now? Yeah, it doesn't look right. Uh, and he looks for Sarah, who's the woman laying next to him, and then a different woman, Shadow, calls him a murderer. Yes. And he realizes he has blood in his hands. And then he really wakes up from his nightmare, and the woman, Sarah, is actually sleeping next to him, not the woman he dreamed about. Yeah. And I had the moment of, uh, this is me being confused with Arrow timeline. Oliver Queen's rich, right? Yeah. He's sleeping on like a futon next to a server. (laughs) And outside his window is just steam. It's like a steam factory (laughs) outside of his window. I was like, what, what weather is causing this? Like, where, where are you? Yeah, I'm assuming it's like, oh, you know, it looks super industrial and, uh, I want to say Gotham-y. I know it's not Gotham, it's Starling City. Uh, but it looks very, uh... Very Gotham-y. Yeah, where, where, like, the weather is steam. Like, not fog. Steam. Yes. (laughs) Billowing puffs of steam. So then, uh, Sarah's still sleeping. Uh, Oliver gets up and makes a phone call and says something in Russian. And the next thing we see is he's out in the parking lot and he's greeting Alexi. Yes. We don't know much about Alexi. Uh, we don't really, like, know why he's talking to Alexi. Right. Uh, and then we see Sarah again. Sarah's the blonde woman he was sleeping next to, not the woman he dreamed about. And she's like, when's the last time you slept? And Oliver's like, when I found out Slade Wilson was alive. And that's when I laughed because I always forget about Slade Wilson versus Wade Wilson. Yes. And how they're Deathstroke and Deadpool. Yes. Or <laughs> what cracks me up is his full name is Slade, Wilf- Slade Wilson, Deathstroke, the Terminator. Wow. Because there's a a match we did at a, a cosplay pro wrestling show mm-hmm. that I do the commentary for. And it's Deathstroke versus Deadpool. <clears throat> and the entire match, I only refer to them as Wade Wilson, Deadpool, and Slade Wilson, Deathstroke, the Terminator. Yeah, <laughs> I say the entire name every time he does anything. 
And Deathstroke does predate Deadpool by about 10 years. Yes. One, uh, 1980 versus 1991. Mm-hmm. So, uh, there, but I always have that moment of Wade Wilson, Slade Wilson, and since Wade Wilson is much more in the cultural vernacular. Yeah. You always kind of have that moment of Slade Wilson. Did they rip that off Deadpool? <laughs> Even though, like... It's the other way around. Yeah, but since Deadpool is actually more successful and more famous. Yeah. And I always forget that Slade's last name is Wilson because Slade is just Slade in yeah. Teen Titans, which is where I learned who he was. Mm-hmm. In old Teen Titans, good Teen Titans. And that's how I know this character. Yeah. I love this character. I love old Teen Titans. Oh, yeah. It's it's amazing. So... So Sarah is, like, worried about Oliver. And I my note here is actually I get why people hate comics because I feel so locked out. Yeah, because I have no idea what they're talking about, and, like, I, I'm i sorry. I don't care. Yeah, like, I, and this is still when the show is considered good. Yeah. Because the show does take a turn, uh, from what I understand, in the mm. cultural vernacular, of uh, people don't love Arrow as much as they used to, and this is when the show is still good. Yeah. And, like, I understand, I don't know who Shadow is, and if, I'm sure if I did... I would care more. Mm-hmm. But to me, all that this episode did for Arrow is Arrow realizes that Slade is alive. He has to go fight him alone. And then he realizes he can't. That's really it. That's really all that happens. We see Felicity. We kind of have to talk about Felicity and Diggle's scene. Okay. I'm going to call him John because Diggle is his last name. But that's such a silly last name. Yeah, Diggles is very silly. So name. we're gonna call him John, which is his first name. Can you Diggles? We're gonna call him John because that's his first name, and I can say that without giggling. Without diggling. <laughs> He's parked outside a woman's house, which isn't creepy at all, and a different blonde woman, not the one we just saw, but a different blonde woman who wears glasses and who. I'm aware enough of the cultural vernacular that I can uh, recognize her as being Felicity Smoke. Okay. And Felicity comes in and, like, brings him hot cocoa and kind of cracks jokes about him waiting outside her house. Mm -hmm. And they're friendly, and she's like, you don't need to sit out here and protect me, because Oliver Queen has everyone he is close to being watched. Right. So that Slade doesn't go get them. So... That's that. The next time we see Felicity, we're skipping over some stuff because we're going to get into the Suicide Squad. I do want to say one line that she says is, she says something like, if Slade wants to kill me, then he'll kill me. It's like, how are you functioning as a person if you care that little about your own survival? I, yeah, I don't know much about her character at this point. Yeah. Just be like, yeah, I'm helpless. And if he wants to kill me, I'll die. That's how it works. It's like, geez, to be that carefree. <laughs> to so, live your life that way. She kind of fulfills like an oracle role. She's like at the computer doing research for uh, Oliver Queen. Yes. I know she later marries him in canon. Aww. So Sarah is not going to be in the picture for that much longer. No. <laughs> um. I, because I'm I'm aware enough of like the blowback from Felicity and Arrow's relationship to know like what goes on here. Yes, it should be noted that even though we don't follow Arrow, we love following our hobby drama. Oh my god! So that's why we know so much about the bad parts about Arrow. I our hobby drama and just nerd rage. Yeah, it's fun because well, a lot of what we write about for comedy. We have to look at what nerds are mad at. Yeah. Because, like, people being happy about a thing doesn't make a good joke or doesn't make a good bit. Like, so, we all like, you know, The Mandalorian, right? That's great. This is why I have no jokes about My Hero Academia. Because every episode I've watched, I was like, solid show. Nothing to add. (laughs) Yeah, so, like, we know a lot about when things go poorly. (laughs) Yeah, it's our job. Yes. So... We're going to skip over and go back to uh, the Oliver Queen plot, because we're just going to motor through this. Yeah, knock it out. He is uh, still looking for Slade, and he finds a long shot of a Slade mask with an arrow through its right eye. Yeah, because that's how he lost his eye. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, I mean, it's symbolic of, like, the mask through his eye. 
Maybe that's how he died originally. I don't know. Yeah, they how he thought he killed him. It, they never fight. <laughs> like, they're in the same room at some times where, like, Slade's standing behind him like, ooh, I'm looking at you. But they never fight, and I never care. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is the slow burn long term. Like, this is clearly the long term story arc of the season. Yeah, but I hate when villains are like, I could kill him right now. But instead, I'm going to put my mask here for him to find. <laughs> well, from what I understand, Slade and Oliver were friends on the island. Okay. Because the whole thing is, like, Oliver was on an island for a few years. Right. And so he was there with Slade, and he thought Slade was dead, and now Slade's back, and whatever. Anyway. So, we get to these, like, we're in a bar called Verdant. And Sarah and Laurel are talking. Laurel is another blonde woman. Yeah, these characters are all identical. <laughs> and like, I'm a blonde woman. Man, they all look the same to me. Yeah. Like, these three characters all look markedly similar. Like, and on top of that, like, there's one with glasses that doesn't wear them all the time. So I'm like, is that a different or no? <laughs> yeah, it's like, are you Felicity or are you Sarah? Yeah. So... Uh, Oliver comes to the bar and Laurel mouths off to Oliver. And apparently Laurel and Oliver used to be an item. Right. Um, so Felicity, uh, Felicity doesn't like that Oliver is like going to cr- fight crime alone because Oliver's supposed to be working with Sarah. Mm-hmm. And she tries to convince him not to go alone. But Oliver's like, I do what I want. I run with no gangs. Mm-hmm. So he uh, he's going to go alone. Yes. And he finds Alexi, his associate, who had given him Slade's bank account number and had been feeding him information, mm. dead with an arrow through his right eye. Yes. So it was kind of like a warning of like, the people who are close to you are going to get got. Yeah. And then he's sad, Arrow. <laughs> and there's a video of a girl playing and it's... You watch Community. Yes. It's Shadow's lost lover footage. Right. It's her, like, in a little sundress and hat, in a sun-drenched summer, smiling at the camera. It's lost lover footage. Right. And that's playing on the wall, like, projected on the wall behind dead Alexi. Right. So as, like, a, hey, queen. Yeah, look what I can do. (laughs) Yeah, like, you know, Oliver Queen, I did, I killed your girlfriend. I'll kill more of your girlfriends. How many girlfriends you got? Kill them all. Yeah. Um... So Sarah is working out and training, and then Oliver comes in and, like, kind of makes himself vulnerable. And he's like, I don't want you to die. You're only alive because Shadow isn't. Mm -hmm. Guilt, guilt, guilt. I'm sad. And then uh, Sarah kind of just says, like, let him come. I'm not the girl I was in the island. I'm not that easy to kill. And they kind of agree that they're together. They embrace. And that's pretty much... Their, uh, their plot. Yeah, I, I want to be honest, we spent way too much time talking about this. Yeah, well, we derailed a lot into, like, the show kind of sucking now. Yes. Uh, there's also, like, timelines and crap now. Because I was doing research for this and I was like, I get why people hate comics. Um, I love comics. But when you're in, like, when you're looking at a universe you're not as familiar with and looking at all the alternate timelines and crap, you're like, oh, it's I too get... Much. Too much. I get why people don't. Why aren't more people into comics? Oh. (laughs) Well, I remember being in a comic book store and watching a customer come in who had just seen the Avengers, the Mm -hmm. first Avengers. And he was like, hey, I want to know more about Hawkeye. Do you have any Hawkeye? And they're like, yeah, we got some Hawkeye stuff. And he goes, oh, well, do you have like the first one? And the guy just laughed in his face like, no, of course not. I mean, I would think that you would be able to just, like, grab Matt Fraction Hawkeye and be like, here you go. Yeah, that's good enough, (laughs) like, for a a starting point on Hawkeye. Yeah. Because if you really want to start at the beginning of Hawkeye, he's evil and his costume's awful. Like, you don't want to start there. The line, and his costume's awful, can be applied to almost any of them. (laughs) Yeah, this is true. This is very true. His is particularly bad. Yeah, but, like... It's kind of like you you just played or heard about like Final Fantasy fifteen. You're like, well, let me go back to one. It's like you don't have to. 
It's not going to be what you want. If you liked 15, don't go back to one and think you're going to have a, a better experience. I, I kind of feel that way with Pokemon nowadays of like, I don't think I could get back into Pokemon because there's been like five generations. Well, I you feel noticed. the opposite about it. Like, I feel like if someone was like, I, I enjoyed Pokemon uh, Sword, maybe I'll try Red. You'll probably have a good time. That's fair. Because you could actually complete it. So, you just need a link cable and a friend. Let's go to the Suicide Squad storyline. Yeah, that's what we're here to talk about, right? It's been 15 minutes. Yeah, so, uh, John, after Felicity, we're going to go back to where Felicity and John were talking. After Felicity is like, I can take care of myself. Uh, she sends John to a hotel room where he's been summoned. And a woman who seems to know him answers. She has just completed a mission and she is wearing lingerie. Mm-hmm. It's his ex-wife and current girlfriend. Yeah, They're the same person. It's not two women. Yeah. It's not yeah. a the boy is mine, Brandy and <laughs> yeah. Monica. It's just like, yeah, we split up, but, you know, sometimes there's the urge and the itch. I mean, like, it's clearly set up to be like something happened, but they're getting back together. Yeah. So, uh, there's a sex scene because it's a CW show. Yeah, very important. And uh, we flash back to Afghanistan and we see the woman... In combat fatigues, and she is yelling at the male commanding officers that they're the women who they're marching with need a rest. The wait, this is the flashback, right? Is this flashback? But the woman, Michaels, yes, that's not his ex wife, right? Yes, I thought they were different races. No? Are you thinking of Amanda Waller? No, I thought the girl in the lingerie was black. No. Am I insane right now? <laughs> yes. I, I don't know what to tell you right now. I don't know now. what to do. I really don't. I. So Michaels is his ex-wife? Yes. And current girlfriend. No, like... My brain will not accept this. Okay, I'll I'll keep going because, so, we co- we go to the Afghanistan flashback and Lila Lila Michaels, um, the woman who was just in the lingerie and is in fact the leading lady of this storyline, um, she demands a rest for the female civilians because one of the f- female civilians' feet are bleeding. Right. So she demands a rest for them. She helps bandage the woman's bleeding feet. And in exchange for her kindness, the woman tips her off that one of the men that's with them is a drug lord and a terrorist. So the female soldier tells one of the men and the man is John. Right. And they are kind of like that. We flash back into the present. And they're in the hotel room, and Amanda Waller appears. Right. Now, I know who Amanda Waller is from the film Suicide Squad and the comics. Right. So that was a... My note literally goes, oh, I know you! Yes. And Amanda Waller is totally chill about the fact that John and Lila are doing it. Mm-hmm. She's like, who among us here hasn't used this suite for that? Which is such yeah. a great comment of like, yeah, we've all done it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the, this is the banging suite. Yeah, like... I can't imagine a professional situation in which your boss goes, yeah, I had sex here too. Like, what? No. (laughs) You need to not. Well, I think there's a a point where a person becomes so professional that they're just like, yes, I have sexual urges that need to be satisfied, as do all humans. So I will satisfy them so I can do my work better. So they become Spock? Kind of, yeah. Like, I think that logic is... A way to express someone as a tight ass. Yeah, because she isn't like... Yeah, sex is an, is an urge that needs to be done, like eating and drinking. Because she's not, like, funny about it. She's <laughs> no. like, yeah, been there. Mm-hmm. So, she is discussing a chemical weapon. Right. And uh, she actually wants to speak to both John and Lila. And they, uh, well, she welcomes them to the Suicide Squad. Title drop! Oh. Yes. She doesn't say it. Deadshot says it. 
Yeah, Deadshot's the one that's like, Give me a break. This ain't no task force. Let's call it like it is. Welcome to the Suicide Squad. I didn't know he was Deadshot at first. I referred to him as Eye Patch in my notes. <laughs> but Deadshot, we, we kind of start meeting everybody and Deadshot has multiple pictures of a young red-haired girl. Yes. And when I say young red-haired girl, I mean like a child. Mm-hmm. Lila and John begin to argue. And that's when we hear, Do you cuties need some counseling? I'm a trained therapist. I hate this. I hate this so much. I love that it's Tara Strong. I love that it's Tara Strong. But she says that, and then all that happens is, uh, what's her name, Waller? Yeah. Punches the door, and then she's quiet. This is a backdoor pilot. Yeah. So you're teasing Harlequin. If you want us to get invested, it can't just be, heh heh, there she was. It should either be, bang, bang. Maybe next time. Or bang, not after what you did. Some Give me a reason to, to care. And give us a reason we don't see her. Because realistically, we don't see Harley. Because if this show had moved forward, they probably wanted to cast a name. Yeah. Because if this show moved forward, Harley is probably your female lead. Yeah. So I could see where they didn't necessarily want to commit to an actress yet. Mm-hmm. So... Um, and everyone else, no, you'd asked me this before the show to look this up. Everyone else we see in the Suicide Squad has appeared in the show before this. Okay. Because they do not explain who these people are at all. Like, I know Deadshot. Yeah. And Deadshot is legitimately one of my favorite Batman villains. Okay. And I, I don't think he's ever gotten really his due for what he can accomplish. But his only explanation of his character is there's a one moment where someone says to him, well, maybe you just missed. And he goes, I don't miss. It's like, all right, that's, that's his thing. He shoots and he doesn't miss. Then there's Tiger. Bronze Tiger. What does he do? <laughs> he is cool looking and has Wolverine claws. Did we see claws? Yes. I don't even remember that. I remember him as he he kind of looked like Luke Cage, but his eyes were red. I remember seeing like his cool claws. He kind of looks like a little Wolverine with the claws. Yeah. He's an assassin. Okay. And then Shrapnel, I learned nothing about. <laughs> Shrapnel is the monster of the week. Six episodes prior to this. Okay. And uh, Shrapnel was driving me nuts because I knew his face. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I also was like, weird, I have a crush on Shrapnel. And then I looked up the IMDb page. He's Simon Tam from Firefly, who I have always adored. He's Sean okay. Maher. Okay, okay. So besides giving you butterflies in your stomach, what does Shrapnel do? He's a bomber. He blows stuff up. Yeah, demolitions expert. Okay. All right. So it's those three. Yes. Lila. Lila. Who is the harbinger. Yeah. L Lila Michaels. Because mm -hmm. I'm going to probably end up calling her Michaels. So I want to just establish yeah. that. And then John Diggle is freelancer. Yes. And Diggle. I like that he is freelancer because he's not, mm -hmm. he's not part of the squad. Yeah. Waller's call sign is Mockingbird. Right. Which is cool. Uh, and also you just see... Marvel going, Mockingbird? Yeah, try it. <laughs> try it. I dare you. Uh, Harley is not part of this, I guess, is my next line. Yeah, to tease it and, like, not imply that it's going to be something later is just kind of a bummer. I, I feel like they should have teased it at the end of the episode. Yeah, this if is not they're not, not going to have her. Yeah. Because I'm sure everybody had thought of you really gonna just give Harley one line and then we'll never see her again? Because, like, it's fine to, to not even address her and have us sit there and be like, well, maybe Harley will show up at some point. This just felt like them saying no. Them being like, Harley Quinn, we know you want her. You know, we know you're asking that question. No, you don't get her. 
I would have thought it would have been better. Shrapnel! To keep her out entirely. And then if you have this show, the first episode's Harley being put in the Suicide Squad. Mm-hmm. You get your audience surrogate. You get the new guy joining the team that every pilot episode is. And then you didn't have to figure out who you were going to cast as Harley until you cast the show. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, so they're in Markova and uh, we get another flashback of the drug lord. And it's they get attacked by insurgents and John saves the drug lord from being shot because he's wanted alive. Yes. So John saves him because... That he wants to catch the... Yeah, because he has tons of information that would be very valuable. helpful and valuable to the United States. And because of this information, he's kind of gotten a plea deal. Mm-hmm. And he's walking free. So they kind of, like, catch up and have, like, a bro talk. Well, yeah. Like, they talk as if they are friends. Yeah, I mean, he saved his life. And now that he's walking free, he's kind of like, yeah, whatever. But, like... They talk as if they are close friends, and uh, he asks Diggle, like, you know, what are you doing? And he's Diggle, like, starts to imply that he's into criminal activity now. Yeah. He's like, yeah, I'm not doing the military thing. I found money doing evil things. And Cudier is like... You're like art, my friend. I know a good investment when I see one. Out of the military, then, and in a more lucrative line of work. What kind of work is that? The kind you don't get to ask about. It's a good scene you're going to... Everything all right here, Mr. Diggle? Yes, he's with me. So the soldier now has his own security. In my line of work, when I do a good job, I tend to make enemies. A good man turns bad. Bad man turns good. You changed my life, you know. Trust, that was never my intention. There is not enough in the flashbacks to imply that they are this good of friends. Yeah, and like... Like, they never hang out socially. It's like, you are my prisoner and I saved your life because it's my job. I mean, I do like that there's a good line of like, what kind of work are you in? The kind you don't get to ask about. Yeah. That's a good line. (sighs) Anyway. uh, So then they're talking and um, John makes a comment about like, if I do my work right, I make a lot of enemies. Right. And just then, Deadshot shoots. Yes. And uh, Diggle dives and saves Kadir. Mm-hmm. And there's a hole in John's jacket. Yeah, to, just to show off how good Deadshot is. Yeah, which he is... He was a- able to not hit him, but puncture his jacket, which yeah. is awesome. So it looks like an assassination attempt on John. Yes. So, Shrapnel, upon realizing what's going on panics and bolts yeah he's not into what's going on he, he's supposed to be the getaway driver and yes. he kind of takes this opportunity to be like well i'm just gonna escape i'm evil except uh not the only one shrapnel just bolted we find him picking him up headed east shrapnel stand down and return to the rally point i won't be conscripted into your moral army Stand down. Final warning. Especially not while in a country without an extradition treaty. Very well. What the hell's going on? Shrapnel just fell out of the game. They're like, well, he doesn't want to play ball. And they press a button and they blow up his head. Yeah, and they, they kind of do a lot of talking about uh, players and the game. Mm-hmm. So they kind of go like, oh, uh, Shrapnel, we have to take a player out of the game. Right. So they take Shrapnel out and Waller activates the explosive implant. Yes, which I didn't know that he had shown up before. Mm-hmm. I thought this was the whole bit was like, you know, that guy that we're just going to kill. Let's call him Shrapnel. Yeah. (laughs) That's what he becomes. It'll be hilarious. Yeah, he does have a death by irony. He's a mad bomber who explodes. But he basically plays the role of Slipknot in the film. Yeah. Because Slipknot's like, 
my power is ropes and getting away. Woohoo! And he gets away and they blow him up. And they're like, see? No, no, no. You don't do that. Play nice. The Suicide Squad red shirt. Yeah. The and one they kill off to say that they'll kill someone off. This is an important like plot point in establishing the Suicide Squad. Is like, we, we have bombs in all of you. This is forcing you to play nice. Yeah. So play nice. And then one person always has to test it and explode to prove it to the rest of the group and establish this rule. Yep. So we're now we're down to Tiger, Bronze Tiger, Bronze Tiger, Deadshot, Deadshot, Lila, and John. And John, which at this point doesn't feel like enough people to be a squad. No. <laughs> like I was like there should be more people to make this a squad. Suicide road trip. Yeah, it's uh, the Suicide Quartet. <laughs> that's a, that's a band. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was an emo band in the 2000s. <laughs> an emo barbershop quartet. <laughs> there, that has to exist. My next note is, it's a shame he seemed kind of cool and he was cute. And now looking up that he was Simon Tam, I'm like, yeah, that's all. This that tracks. makes sense. So Deadshot works on getting a fingerprint sample yes. from uh, John. Because now John has been invited to this very fancy benefit Kadir is running. Yes. Basically, this, the assassination attempt was like to sh- kind of prove that they're on the same level so that he could get invited to this thing. Yeah, it's to earn trust. So they talk about the little girl. It's yeah. Zoe. Zoe, which is Deadshot's daughter, who he loves, but feels like he should keep his distance from to like keep her away from what he does. Yeah, he says like Everything he makes beyond his own personal expenses goes into a blind trust for her. Yeah. And he says, like, the best thing I can do for her life is not be in it. Yeah. So he kind of has this, like, noble background of, like, he has a daughter he loves. He can't connect with her because of his line of work. Mm Mm-hmm. But he wants to make sure she's cared for. Yes. So uh, my next note is that he's a compelling lead. Yeah, I, I like Deadshot. Yeah, yes. he's really good in this. He's got he kind of looks like me. No, <laughs> in terms of like hair and stature. No, uh, I I immediately was like, I can play this part. <laughs> no, um, Wait, you're just saying that because I have both my eyes. Anyway, uh, he's a compelling lead, and he, like he's also he's got like a very good anti-hero vibe. Yeah, he's got a very good. He's someone who has done really terrible things, but we as an audience can still care about. Mm-hmm. And the actor does a very good job of making him likable despite everything. Yes. Um, I actually found him to be more likable than I found Will Smith as Deadshot. Have you seen Suicide Squad? Parts of it, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I haven't seen all of it. I was surprised you were able to like have that opinion. Um, I would agree. I would agree that he's more likable than... I couldn't make it through the whole movie. It's. I'll talk about more of the movie later. But, uh, but yeah, he's he's definitely a good person to build this show around. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, they get to this benefit. And Lila is being passed off as Johnny's new body... As John's new bodyguard. I don't know why I called him Johnny in that one. Yeah. I think Lila might have called him Johnny at one point. Um, but she's passed off as his new bodyguard. And he goes like, she's brand new. I wasn't even able to get her credentials. So Kadir takes them aside. And in the interim, Deadshot uses John's faked fingerprint. Yes. And gets in. So he like kind of sneaks in. And like, we get these really cool shots of Deadshot trying to sneak under... The party. Yes. We get this great, really good cinematography shot of this long green corridor Mm -hmm. and dead shot standing at the end of it. And so it's just his red eye. Mm -hmm. It's a really well done shot and something where you're like, they were totally going to use that in the intro to this TV show. Yes. And they're supposed to get this vial of nerve agent and then get out. Mm -hmm. It is not just a vial. It is a vet. Yeah, it is... Like Christmas tree size. That's why you look at our Christmas tree. <laughs> I was gonna. I was trying to figure out something else to say besides it's about the size of our Christmas tree. But it's about the size of our Christmas tree. Yes. 
he kind of says, like, we have a situation here. We can't just pocket this and go. Yeah. And Waller then begins to tell John and Lila to evacuate. Yeah. Well, first he tells, or she tells Deadshot, stay put. Yeah. And then tells the rest of the team, hey, time to go. Yeah. This time Bronze Tiger is the getaway driver. Mm Mm-hmm. So he's just kind of kicking it in the car. Yeah, I think it's weird that, like, he's not involved at all. Yeah, he's... Because, like, now the squad's down to three people. And that is not a squad! Yeah, so he's just, like, hanging out in the car. And then Waller repeatedly tells John and Lila to leave. hmm And then they realize that Waller is planning a drone strike. Yes. That will level the building. Yes, including all of the guests... All of the guests, Kadir, Deadshot, everything. Yes. That's why she wants Lila and John to get out. Because mm-hmm. she's not planning on killing them, too. Right. So, uh, John Diggle does a Christian Bale, Bruce Wayne, and Batman Begins. Yes. He taps a champagne glass and then talks about how evil Kadir is. Mm-hmm. And talks about Kadir's past, which you get the impression the guests didn't really know. Right. Like, ah, he's an arms dealer and a terrorist and a drug lord. And everyone who's gone here for this charity benefit is like, ooh, we're out. Mm -hmm. And he's like, also, he's got a whole lot of chemical weapons in the basement. And everyone's like, we're gonna go. I think this plan is stupid. Because I said, oh, light the house on fire. Well, Lila's plan is pull a fire alarm. Yeah, that's, it's so obvious. Like, to me, you go to the smoke detector and you light a lighter next to it. Mm-hmm. Like, or you just, like, find something to burn and just hold it up next to the yeah. smoke detector. Light the house on fire. Yeah. You don't even have to actually light the house on fire. You can. You can. I mean, well, I guess you can. I mean, like, I've been in too many situations where the fire alarm goes off and we go, uh, I wonder if that's real. Yeah. <laughs> and then we stay? <laughs> it's like, no, it's on fire. There's smoke. Oh, okay. So then Kadir freaks out, puts a knife to Lila's throat, and Tiger stabs the crap out of him with his Wolverine claws. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So. I remember this now. And then uh, John runs downstairs to go collect Deadshot because they mm-hmm. don't want to leave without him. Now, Deadshot, it's worth mentioning, killed John's brother. Yes. So. They have a contentious relationship at best. I feel like this relationship is not established enough. Yeah, it, for a backdoor pilot, it should have been hit harder. Yeah. Like, we could have spent more time on that and not on mm-hmm. Oliver. So, they kind of are at an impasse. Like, Deadshot is aware that the plan is for him to get killed in the drone strike. Because it's turning out, the bomb in the back of his neck. Yeah. Yeah. Is a homing signal. that That's what they're using for the drone to catch them. Yeah, they don't realize it yet, though. Right. But Deadshot wants to go out with honor, and John uses Zoe to convince Deadshot to come with him. Yes. So they come out at the same time, and they're following Lila, Deadshot, John, and Tiger, who are all in a car together. And then Lila realizes what's going on. Yeah, they realize that the drone... Like, the missile misses the building and starts following the car. And they're like... The drone shifted course. It's following us. Did you find that funny? Whoa, what a woman. How do you think she knew where to send a drone, huh? And I mean, the precise coordinates. Implants. Bomb and GPS. Pretty clever, right? The drone ain't targeting Golem's house. It's targeting me. Hold still. This is gonna hurt. So she cuts the bomb out of Deadshot's neck, throws it out of the car, and the missile hits right behind them, and they drive away from the explosion, and it looks real cool. And yeah, it blows up the street. <laughs> yep. And then uh Waller fires John. I hate this. Because Waller says something like you cost us millions because of the damage done to that street. Okay. You were going to kill 
like 200 people for no reason. Like there's no reason for them not to know the location of this building to just set the drone to attack that building rather than this complicated dead shot thing. What they were going to do, the the plan was they didn't want people to know America was involved. They wanted it to appear that there had just been an accident in the chemical weapons facility downstairs. Right. During the party. Yeah, I guess you can, that's a way you can get around with the fact that, like, they don't care that they're going to kill these hundreds of people at a charity benefit. Yeah. Uh, but I still think the plan of, like, oh, we'll just lock it on to, to Deadshot. Like, even if John didn't go down and, like, save him, the plan still relies on convicted convict Deadshot doing what he's told. Yeah. Like, this is such a just dumb thing. And then Waller's just like, I can't believe you did that. You're fired. And he was a freelancer. He he was a freelancer. Also, committed, like, high treason. (laughs) If you really think, like, he shouldn't be like, no, you don't get to work here anymore. She'd be like, you should go to jail forever. Based on, like, this is like super secret ops that you have just... Disobeyed. This is high treason. I, I'm i unfamiliar with how government-y Argus actually is. Like, how recognized they are. They're currently, like, a research group. The Advanced Research Group United Support. Which is a stupid, stupid name. But just, just the thought of it being, like, you're this big, powerful company of, like, Super spies and high tech. And the punishment that you give this man is he's not going to get to do any of the jobs you forced him to do in the first place. He suffers no consequences. And um, Waller points out to Lila, who still does work there. Right. Because Lila is not fired. How strange it was that John knew where the implant was to cut it out. A right. Dead shot. Kind of implying that Waller knows that Lila cut it out. Yeah. So now they're going to put the bomb in their spinal cords instead. Yeah. Which I think, I mean, they kind of had to do that so they could keep the premise if it became a show. Yeah, because otherwise it it seemed to be easy to cut out. Mm-hmm. So they need to make it so that, like, Brahms Tiger literally just carries knives. Yeah. Like. <laughs> and done. So. Um, they kind of have this moment where like, John's like, how did you not get fired? And Lila's like, I have a really high security clearance. It's really hard to get rid of me. So we go back to Afghanistan again. And Johnny gets a commendation for bringing in Kadir. Mm-hmm. And Lila congratulates him. And they actually introduce themselves to each other and shake hands. Yeah. And it's the first moment they've really met. And then we see them announce that they can't lose each other again. Mm -hmm. And kiss. And there should have been, if you were going to do this, there should have been another Harley line right about here. Yeah, that would have been a good spot for it. I guess you don't need counseling. Mm -hmm. Like, that would have been where you put another Harley line. Mm -hmm. And then the end of it is just like, Oliver watching the A-plot on the news. Yeah. Like, oh man, it seems way more interesting than what I did today. And then he goes to Waller and Waller offers help and says, like, this is Deathstroke. Mm -hmm. And introduces Slade as Deathstroke. And that's how the episode ends. Mm -hmm. So everybody had appeared before at this point. Uh, Deadshot appears in several episodes in one and two. Uh, His character is killed off in season three. Huh. Um, not not much of a long run. Amanda Waller appears frequently. Lila Michaels is recurring in every season. Uh, John Diggle is a series regular. Right. Uh, Bronze Tiger comes back for several episodes in season seven. Good for him. So everyone's been seen. Deadshot? I just said Deadshot is killed off in season three. Oh, I thought they, I'm sorry. I thought you said Deathstroke. No. They killed... Ah, oh, Boo! Yeah, maybe. Boo. Did I say Deathstroke? No, I, I think know. you might have said Deathstroke. Okay, uh, Deadshot appears a few more times in season two and then is killed off in season three. Okay. 
Which sucks. That does really suck. He was a cool character. Zoe! He is a good character. It's kind of a dumb bummer that they got rid of him. And they never really do put in with anything with Harley Quinn. I'm not surprised. So. All right. (laughs) So, the movie. We have to address the 2016 movie. Yes. So, the movie consists of Harley Quinn. Yes. Deadshot, which is uh, Will Smith. Yes. uh, uh, Katana. Katana. Uh, Captain Boomerang. Captain Boomerang, my boy, Captain Boomerang. Slipknot. Slipknot. That's the one I was wanting to say and just couldn't get it out of my mouth. Killer Croc. Oh, yeah. Killer Croc's in it. Uh, and Huntress? Or Enchantress. No, Enchantress. I knew it was a tryst. Enchantress. No, Huntress is Birds of Prey. Right. Excuse me. Uh, and this, this film... They didn't know what they were going to do with it. I think it is probably two-thirds a good film. Yeah, I mean, I have read... Because I read a lot about uh, movies that perform poorly and movies that are reviewed poorly in my other job. And this movie was kind of a mess. They rushed it into production. They had six Mm -hmm. weeks to write the script. Mm Mm-hmm. And when the trailer came out, the trailer was very well received because it looked like a madcap, fun movie yes. based around Bohemian Rhapsody in the trailer. Mm-hmm. And then the real movie wasn't that tone. Yeah. But then they kind of had to do rush reshoots to get that tone. See, I actually had the conspiracy theory that they created this trailer when it was like really cool. And then Guardians of the Galaxy came out and they were like, oh, that's kind of what we were going to do. I don't think the timeline works out there because Guardians came out in 2013. Guardians came out before the Suicide Squad uh, movie came out. Okay, I, I, I'm just wrong. <laughs> um, Cut this from the podcast. Yeah, Suicide Squad, the movie, came out in 2016. Yes. And Guardians of the Galaxy came out in 2013. Uh, the Suicide Squad could have been a great movie had they peppered in all these characters in other... Excuse me. Guardians of the Galaxy came out in 2014. So Guardians of the Galaxy came out after this TV episode, but before the film. Okay. Uh, in any case. Yeah. The had they introduced, like, if in, like, Ben Affleck Batman, you saw Deadshot for a moment. Yeah. Because they actually have that scene where... Ben Affleck and Will Smith are in the do a scene together and it's in Suicide Squad. Yeah. If you had just seen Batfleck knock out Deadshot and be like, ah, we're done with you. And yeah. like just slipped, sprinkled him in. And then it was like all these characters that have been on the peripheral this whole time are now going to be a team. Yeah. Like that would have been great. And the Nolan Batman movies did a good job. They kind of did it the other way around. Mm-hmm. But think of how they used Scarecrow. Yeah. Or um, Zaz. Yeah, I mean, but what I'm thinking of is, like, Scarecrow had a small role in all three of those movies. Mm-hmm. A major role in the first, but then, like, they found a way to tie him in. Mm-hmm. You could have tied in Croc or Katana or Harley yeah. in one of those ways. Like, because I think back to, uh, I think it's Batman versus Superman, where you see Batman looking at, like, security footage of all the other here of like Flash Wonder Woman and, and Flash yeah. stuff. If you if in that security footage it was Flash defeating Captain Boomerang, yeah, like what a beautiful thing it would be. But they don't have the foresight to do that. Have Quinzel be a character, yeah, because they they go into Harley's origin in Suicide Squad. You could have had Harleen be a minor character in Batman v Superman. Yeah, like. Someone who doesn't show up a lot. Like, mm-hmm. somewhere on the level of, like, a Mercy Graves level character. Yeah. So, yeah. Unfortunately, that movie killed the show. Really? Yeah. They, once they announced that they wanted to do Harley Quinn and Suicide Squad as films, uh, they told DC TV they could not use the characters anymore. This is DC's mm. fatal flaw, in my opinion. They want to keep TV and movies separate. But they still don't want you to be able to use the characters. Yeah. Because this is actually why we lost uh, Jerome in Gotham for a time. 
Oh, really? Jerome was supposed to be the Joker. I, I haven't seen how Gotham ends. He might have ended up the Joker. <laughs> yeah, but like in the seasons we actually watched, in like mm-hmm. seasons one, two, three, the reason he gets unceremoniously killed off in season two was because they didn't want people to compare him to Jared Leto. Oh, yeah. God forbid. <laughs> oh, I think it would have sucked for Jared Leto because... <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> Cameron Monaghan did a great job as Jerome. <laughs> yes, he did. Um, He's somebody I'd love to see in more stuff. Yeah. The actor who played Jerome. He is fantastic. Yeah. So, the movie killed this pilot. And it's a shame, because I really like the actors, and I really like the concept. I I think, uh, I guess we're, we're on verdict time. Yeah? What are you saying? Stay tuned. Yeah? Yeah, I mean, I would like Shrapnel to stay around a little more. Mm-hmm. But they clearly had the idea of, like, we're going to put in Harley. They clearly didn't want to, like, commit to an actress yet. But it would have been Harley, Deadshot, Bronze Tiger. And there's a pretty deep well for them to go to to fill out the cast. Yeah. Stay doomed. Really? I I really didn't like this. Really? I Like, I, I thought th- there were too many times where I didn't feel... It Like, it was about the Suicide Squad. Like, it's about Diggle. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he's against this whole project. But, like, do Deadshot and Tiger ever speak? To each other? Yeah. Not really, no. Then, like, why am I going to care when they're a team later without Diggle, who's going to be busy doing Arrow stuff? Um... I found Lila to be... Lila would have probably also been a considerable role in this. I, I mean, I guess you could have had Lila be the tether between. But, like, the if this was supposed to get me excited about a Suicide Squad, all that you gave me was Tiger is there, Lila's pretty cool, and Deadshot's interesting. The squad's down to three. Mm-hmm. Harley Quinn's maybe around. But, like... You need to give me something to make me want to see more of this. Something like, he's expendable, we have plenty. And then throw down a thing of files that has a bunch of names of characters I care about. That would have been a good shot. Just something. Like, this felt so over when it was done. Because to be honest, the Suicide Squad fails as a concept. Like, if you are this company... The one time you've tried the Suicide Squad thing, it didn't work right. I I didn't get the impression that this was their first mission. Why did we need Diggle? To tether it to Arrow. Like... In every backdoor pilot, there is a recurring character from the main show that tethers the narrative so that it's not... This isn't an episode of... I I got the impression this was their first mission. I kind of didn't. I got the impression that this was early in their missions, but not their first. Okay, cause, and and like a, a clear line, like not what like to Harley Quinn, like not after what you did last time, yeah, would have really tied all of this together. But like, you you started out with a squad of only five. Mm-hmm. We're down to three. Only one of the characters is super interesting, and I've yet to see them interact with each other. Like, the two cool things to me about Suicide Squad is, it is, or I guess it's one thing, it's a squad of people that don't like each other, but work together because they really hate their employer. (laughs) Yeah, I feel like that's something, this is a pilot. Like, I feel like those are things that would have had more time. If we were going to kill off Shrapnel, I feel like we spent too much time with him. Yeah. Um, Because I like Shrapnel a lot, and he, like, has a moralizing debate with himself Mm -hmm. that we didn't really talk about in that first sequence. We probably should have given Bronze Tiger way more screen time if he's going to be sticking around. Like, during the whole scene where they're trying to get the vial that doesn't actually exist, uh, I actually turned to you and say, did Tiger go with them? Yeah, you did. Because we we had gone so long without seeing him. Because when 
he saves Lila. Yeah. It's a surprise that he's there. That's true. And I was just like, what is the plan here? Like, they didn't put enough together to make me think, man, I need another episode of this. I I kind of felt like I could have watched more of this. So I'm yeah. going to stick with my stay tuned. Yeah, I- I'm just saying stay tuned because I think as a pilot, there's enough material they could have given us to make me care more that they just didn't include and not for a reason I understand. Yeah, I think they could have definitely done more. Mm-hmm. But I think this was a start and there's not so much I'd change that it would game over rule. Yeah, and I will say I might be being extra critical because I was so bored during the Arrow part. Yeah. That I was just like, I mean, <laughs> it had such a bad taste in my mouth and you might have enjoyed it more because you hated the Arrow stuff so much that you were like, ah, oh, finally. I also, I, I think you lost a huge emotional thread of the episode not realizing that Lila was the female soldier. I'm going to watch this again after we're done recording, not because I don't believe you, because it makes sense. It's just in my brain. I see a different person in that scene. Yeah, like, I don't know what to tell you, because it's objectively the same human being. All right, I'm going to watch it. But it's, I'm still going to go with a stay doomed for this one. Uh, I like the movie more. Ugh. <laughs> Sorry. So next week, yeah, we are going to be watching The Henry and June Show. Yes. The attempted spinoff of Kablam. Yeah, this is going to be an interesting I'm one. I'm so hype. I loved Kablam growing up. I loved Kablam. I've never well. watched the special. Nor have I. So, so this get should hype. be a really, really good time. Where can people find us? You can email us at thestaydoomedshow at gmail.com or on Facebook and Twitter at Stay Doomed. And what if people want to see us live? January 2nd through 5th at MAGFest in National Harbor, Maryland. And if you want to talk to me about people that should have been mentioned in this episode as members of the Suicide Squad. I'm at TV's Noah. If you don't think Noah looks like Deadshot, I'm at Priorities. Until next time, stay doomed.